friends. Welcome to the Glow Getters podcast. My name is Kayla Fahey Arndt, but you can call me KFA because nobody can say that last name. I teach and inspire leaders to step into their power, productive selves, and unlock their fullest potential. I'm a multi-passionate creative and scientist who climbed to the top of the healthcare leadership ladder by age 28, making six figures as a manager. I share what I've learned that I wish I knew when I landed my first leadership role at age 25. You can find more from me on my Patreon site at patreon.com slash KFA Glow Getters. Okay, now on to the show. Hey everyone, thanks again for joining me. Today's episode is going to be about donating your time, talents, or treasures to help others. And so what I really want to talk about is an idea that I've had in my head for a while and what I'm doing with it and maybe where it will go, I'm not sure. So um, many of you know that I consider myself an artist. I love to paint. Originally, I mostly only um, drew pictures like pencil drawings, charcoal drawings, I always loved to draw as a kid. Um, I did the fifth, my fifth grade yearbook cover, and I think I did the seventh or eighth grade yearbook cover. So um, it's always been a passion of mine. And I've always lived where I had lots of many, many sketchbooks and just always doodling, especially in the summertime when I'm out at the lake or the cabin. And so Gosh, I'm trying to think like how many years ago now, but maybe it was 2017 or um, probably before that, 2016, 2015 maybe, I started to paint and definitely was not consistent with it or disciplined. Just anytime the spirit moved me, I would pick up a paintbrush and just give it a shot. And over time, I've kind of learned a few things and gone to see other artists work and realized like, you know, there's a lot of different ways that you can paint. There's a lot of ways to express your, express yourself with creativity. And if you have a talent like that, or if you just have a love for something, then why not? You know, whenever the spirit moves you. Um, so for me, a lot of times, just painting was really relaxing. And it still is. To me, it's, um, you know, sometimes I pause before I paint because I'm like, oh, it's a lot of work to get out all the supplies because you need your easel and you need... To have a palette um, so you can lay out all your paints and you need to have all the brushes and you need the water or paint thinner or whatever you're going to use to clean your brushes and just have canvas and set up but at the same time it can just be really simple I often will sit in my living room and um, I have like a tv tray and I just pull that out and I put my canvas right on top and I just grab my bag of paints and put them on a, uh, a paper plate <laughs> or a palette, mic- palette or whatever I've got and I just go for it and it doesn't have to be perfect. I think um, a while back I started experimenting with abstract because I um, previously had only done like, I would try to paint things like real life, like flowers or um, even just scenes or sometimes people or things. Um, but I was going through a time where work was really stressful and I just felt like I just have, you know, all these thoughts in my head at night. You know, I come home and I'm thinking about work. I'm just going to put them on the palette and be done. And actually came up with some really cool abstract pieces that I actually have um, listed for sale right now because they're they're fun. And I know um, other people enjoy them. I've sold one of them to a friend and she said it furnishes um, like behind her um, like little cozy chair that she has and so I think that's really cool so it can also be kind of therapy um, to do art in that way for me where I just start I just let the paintbrush go and sometimes I think is like is this really art (laughs) it's yeah this is self-expression and so um, I've had over time various little pop-up shops I've had like an Etsy shop for my art I called it Cerulean online I've had my own website where um, I just like list my art for sale like all of my art Um, and over time I would have these ideas about what I would want to do with it because at one point I had a lot of art and I was like I'm not gonna hang all this up in my own home like I would love to share it with people and sell it and so um, one idea I had was how cool would it be if my art did some good you know like if I could bring together people 
and we could somehow like have some kind of auction or sell the art and it would benefit a certain cause. And for a while in my head, that cause would be pairing art with science. And so, you know, thinking about like underfunded research, um, you know, I'd have to raise a lot of money to make an impact in that area. But just thinking like, how cool would it be if some of this money or this art could do good? And so going into self-care September this month, I really just thought about, okay, well, I, I still have this love. I want to do something good. And I registered for the NAMI walk in Minnesota um, at Minnehaha Falls, which is a beautiful park in Minneapolis. And um, the cool thing about um, this is that uh, I've walked in it before. I had a team last year, and it's just it's just a beautiful day. It's family friendly, and NAMI is the National Alliance for Mental Illness. And so, some of you have heard my story before. I've had a lot of connections to uh, and our experiences with mental illness or mental health and I think a lot of us have right like I think we've all been in different periods of time where we might feel like we're um, not performing as highly as we normally are because we're going through something or um, we have folks who have you know lots of limitations because of their mental health or mental illness and so how can we help those people Um, my my big reason for walking in the Nami Walk is that I have a friend, his name is Eric, Um, we went to um, school together in high school, we played in a band um, and sang in choir together, went to church together, like pretty much grew up with him, Um, and then two years ago I was sitting at my desk in the middle of class and I got a phone call from, I got a text from my best friend that she said that um, Eric had passed away and right away I was like, well, what, you know, what happened? She said he killed himself. And I immediately said, do you think it was an accident? You know, because I didn't know what happened and found, you know, finding out what happened. Um, and it wasn't an accident. And so that made me really sad. And I, I was devastated. And I just thought like, nobody, like I haven't been around home where we grew up in a long time so I hadn't really interacted with him since Ashley got married when we were all in the wedding together and so that made me sad thinking like I wasn't there to notice like any signs of anything that was going on in his life and I don't know what was going on Um, and I think a lot of people around him are still shocked like I don't know how this could happen and so I just feel like I want to remember him and um, it made me think about like brain disorders or brain function and brain health and you know I think about my grandpa who suffered from Alzheimer's and how you know that would be such a great organization the Alzheimer's Association to really support someday um, for more research Uh, some of the things that the lab that I'm working in we're doing some really cool procedures with the apheresis plasma exchange for Alzheimer's so I just thought this is you know how could I give back to these organizations. Um, it's a huge commitment when you're on a planning committee for one of these organizations for an event or you're going to do massive fundraising. And so I thought, I don't really want to burden myself with that right now because I have a lot of things going on in my life, but I do want to make a difference and I believe that small differences can add up. And so, yeah, basically just thought, okay, I'm going to take my art and figure out okay, if I sell it, can I put some proceeds towards, um, you know, one of these organizations? And so for me, it was easy. It's like with NAMI Walks, I already have a team. I need to fundraise. How cool would it be if my art could do some good and that the proceeds from that could go to my team fundraising goal, which right now it's set at 500. I think we passed that last year and I think all of us raised at least $100 or more Um, which was totally amazing. And so, yeah, I think, you know, self-care September, when you think about um, giving yourself care, giving yourself self-care, it's often filling back your bucket up because we give and give so much of ourselves so often. But I think it is humbling and good for us to give our time, talent, and treasure when, um, because it does make us feel good and because we can do good in the world. And that is so satisfying. 
And so, um, you know, what better way to feel joy, right, is to participate in a group event like this, you know, walking together for a common cause and, hey, being able to support the mission. One thing I want to say is that when you think about donating and money and, you know, organizations asking for money, um, people sometimes get weirded out about it. You're know, like, oh, they're asking me for money or fundraising's hard. I don't want to ask people. But I will say something that I heard a long time ago, and I forget, I think the name of the woman was Pam. I forgot her last name, but she used to be a board member for the American Cancer Society. And she was a philanthropist. Um, and she was really into raising funds for organizations, especially the American Cancer Society. And one thing she said, it was no money, no mission. And that's so true. These organizations need funding to be able to carry out their mission. What is really great is when an organization can do that responsibly and most of the money goes to mission and only a small percentage goes to administration or overhead. And that's when you know you have a great organization. And so if you're ever wondering if the organization you are donating to um, is in good standing, you can check the Better Business Bureau's website. And if they're on there, you can feel really good about the organization. Um, if they're a new a startup and haven't earned that accreditation yet uh, or certification yet, one thing you can look for is, does your organization have a board of directors? If they have an established board, that often means they're legitimate because they have oversight. Um, so looking for things like that, making sure the websites look legit with missions and visions and board members and maybe meeting minutes or agenda. Transparency is really key. So again, emphasizing no money, no mission. So I think it's really important if there's a cause you care about that um, you do what you can to support them, whether it's money, you know, fundraising, donating your own, but maybe you donate your time, which is volunteering, to help organize fundraising events or uh, awareness or advocacy events. Um, maybe it's just your talent, you know. Maybe for me, I'm, I want to, I create art and I'm going to use it for good. And so um, I just challenge you this month in Self Care September is how can you use your time, talents, or treasures to support organizations that you care about um, or a group of folks that you really care about um, in your community so that you can give back and also find joy in that. So this makes me really excited. If you guys want to help support me, um, I'm so, I'd be so grateful. On my Instagram, at Kayla Fahey Arndt, you'll find the link to my team, Walking Pineapples. Um, Eric was... Uh, pineapples have become synonymous with Eric these days. He... Um, was in a band, and their one of their main symbols was, was the pineapple. And I just think that just to honor him, we're calling it the Walking Pineapples. So I love that. Um, if you want to check out some of my art, you can find my um, handle on my page, on my Instagram, on my personal Instagram. But I also have a specific Instagram. Um, I organized a little shop on Instagram called Blue Hue Art, and. Um, actually, the handle for that is blue.hue.art. And I have nine pieces for sale, some abstract, um, some flowers. I have one with a quote on the side, which I'm hoping to do more of that if people seem to like that. Um, and I don't have it on my Etsy shop. Uh, or You know, you can buy everything on my Etsy shop. But I, I don't have a list for custom orders, but I am open to it. So if there's something you see that you want something similar or you are wondering if I can do something for you, just send me a DM and I would love to connect with you and create something beautiful that brings you joy, whether that's for your office space at home or at you know your remote uh, office at work or if that's just for your home. Maybe it's your bathroom, your entryway. Maybe you need something to just make you smile when you um, get up in the morning. So... Thank you all for listening. Um, so excited for Self Care September, and I hope that you go find um, where you can use your time, talent, or treasures. Have a good one. Whoa, that went by way too fast. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode of Glow Getters Podcast. You can get the bonus content for this podcast at my Patreon site at www.patreon.kfaglowgetters. And also you can check me out on Instagram at Kayla Fahey Arndt. All right, everyone, until next time, be a light in the world. Talk to you soon.